Hey, what's up everybody? It's Friday. Oh wait, no, it's Thursday, but it's my Friday. I have tomorrow and next Tuesday off over this holiday weekend, so that gives me five days away from my day job. That's five days with my family. That's five days shooting. And speaking of shooting, I have no idea how to how to pack or prepare for this next five days, like what I'm going to shoot. Um, the weather's supposed to be clear over the next five days, so that has me thinking that at least one night I'm going to try to get to Grand Haven and see if I can't shoot the Milky Way over the, the South Pier in Grand Haven. And if you're wondering what the South Pier is, if you go to my Flickr page and take a look, um, and just do a search for Grand Haven. You should find some photographs of the South Pier in Grand Haven. Um, I have to do a little bit of uh, investigation to find out where the Milky Way will be rising from, if it will indeed be over the South Pier. I'm pretty sure that if I go out to the end of the North Pier, uh, I should be able to shoot southwards towards the South Pier and uh, get the Milky Way coming up over it. I'm hoping, anyways. That's kind of like one of those shots that's in this mental shot list that I have going here. Um, other than that, you know, I really don't have an agenda for shooting. I plan on taking the, the TG tracker that I'm recording on right now uh, to the beach if we spend any time at the beach or um, into the pool. There's a pool at the campground. And, well, if there's a pool, my kids are going to want to live in it, basically. So... They'll be spending a lot of time there, so I'll be playing with the tracker in the pool as well. Um, but I really don't, other than that one Milky Way shot, I really don't know what I want to shoot. Um, I'm thinking that I should take the 300 millimeter, just because it's on the east side, or sorry, the west side of the state, and over there on that side of the state, there's a little more um, open countryside and a little more rural areas than there are towards this side of the state. So the birding is a little bit better over there in my opinion. So my hope is that I can get some good birding in over there. I did in the spring. And last year I didn't really do any birding in the summer. So I'm kind of curious to see what I can find, you know, over the summer. And well, it's summer, so that's what I'm gonna try. Any suggestions from you guys? I mean, what should I shoot? I'm really not sure. Equipment, though, I'm thinking I'm gonna take uh, the EM5. Well, I'm, this is me, the bad packer again, the pack rat. So I'm thinking the EM5 Mark II. I prefer shooting at night with that camera. I don't know, I just prefer the results I get with that body at night. So that'll be my Astro camera for the week uh, weekend. If I do birding, I like the way that the EM-1 feels with the 300 millimeter. It's just a better balance to me. Um, and I like, things just kind of jive better with the 300 millimeter on the EM-1 for me. Not to say that you can't shoot that lens on anything. I mean, you can, I put it on the Pen F. It's a prime, so I can do that. Um, and it works just fine. So, but for me, just from an ergonomic standpoint, I like the way that it fits up with the EM-1. So I'll be bringing the EM-1 probably for birding and wildlife. And I'm gonna bring the Pen F. I know, it's like, holy crap, dude, really? Three bodies for five days? That's just ridiculous. But the Pen F is just kind of my, I always have it with me camera. I always have it with me camera. But I'll pare down my my lens selection with the Pen F this week and I won't bring, you know, a whole slew of primes. I'll bring a few. <laughs> so I'll probably bring the 12 millimeter F2 instead of the 17. So instead of the 17, which always seems to be on the camera, it's actually on the camera right now. Um, instead of that, I'll have the 12 millimeter and I'm gonna bring the 25 millimeter F1.8. Um, a friend of mine, Alberto, uh, he's a photography writer, blogger, 
um, great photographer. He lives in New York City. I was just chatting with him for a minute today. He had inquired with me, you know, as to between a couple of different lenses, which one would I recommend? And the 25 millimeter was on his list, and the 17 was not at the at the time. And I told him, I said, well, the 25 millimeter is an astounding lens. It doesn't seem to get a lot of press or a lot of play from people for some reason. I think that it's too long for street shooting maybe for most people and too short for portrait work. So it's just kind of in that spot where it doesn't get a lot of attention. So I'm bringing that this weekend and that's going to take the place of my 17 just so that I can give it a little exposure. And I miss shooting with it. I used to love that lens and then uh, for whatever reason I just I don't know I ended up shooting with the 17 a lot and hell half of that could just be because everybody talked about the 17 so for the pen sorry I get going on a tangent and I get all wound up so my pen kit will be pen F 12mm F2 25mm F1.8 and I'm really wishy-washy about this next lens it's either going to be the 75 millimeter f1.8 or the Voigtlander 42 and a half f.95 I'm not sure which one to bring they're both luscious beautiful longer lenses and it's funny like I'm stressing myself out thinking about it right now I don't know which one to bring so maybe if I get more than like one person that comments on this video suggesting one or the other which one Voigtlander or the Imsuiko 75 you pick you guys pick make me have a little less deciding to do so that's the the portable the travel the small the prime kit now the bigger gear uh, three lenses <laughs> so it's gonna be the 12 to 40 because I have a whole ensemble of filters that I can use with it the 7 to 14 because I've got that killer filter set up from Phil Norton the is the filter system for the 7 to 14 and uh, the 300 but I kind of feel like I screen the 40 to 150 because the 300 is just like crazy long all the time My wife hates the camera here, I think, because I bring so much. So I don't know. Anyways, I'll figure it out. But you, you see what I'm doing here again. In Chicago, I, I did a good job. I really, I pared down what I was bringing, and I ended up only bringing the Pen F, the EM5 Mark II, an 8 millimeter, the 7 to 14, the 40 to 150, the 17 millimeter and the Voigtlander 42 and a half. That's it. That's good for me. That's really good for me on oh, the tracker. Um, but this is different. You know, this is five days. <laughs> and I'm doing a lot of different stuff, you know. So, I don't know. Do you guys have this problem? Do you ever struggle with should you bring a lot or should you not bring a lot? I don't know. Anyways. I'm going to turn the camera off because I feel like I'm just rattling on and I know it's got to be annoying listening to this talk sometimes, but I'll turn the camera back on a little bit later when I'm out shooting because I think I'm going to go out and shoot macro today uh, and I've got a subject in mind and tell me if this is normal. Sometimes I just get like a thing in my head where I'm like, that was an interesting alert. So sometimes I get in my head where there's a particular thing I just want to find and shoot. Today, uh, on my drive before, almost like crazy notifications all of a sudden. So on my drive today, I need ADD medicine. I keep getting off task. Um, on my drive today, before I turned on the camera, I noticed that one of the uh, plants that grows all over here in Michigan, it's called milkweed. I noticed that milkweed was, it's tall now and it's flowered everywhere, which reminds me that monarch cat uh, monarch butterfly caterpillars should be out and about now so they feed on milkweed they feed on milkweed because this this sap it's this milky sticky bitter sap that's in the milkweed actually um, makes the monarch caterpillars taste bad so it's part of their defensive mechanism you know is to eat the milkweed the sap from it makes them unappetizing to birds yada 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 anyways 
saw the milkweed. I know the caterpillars are out, so I'm thinking about shooting macro. I probably could have said that and saved you guys five minutes. Seriously, turning off the camera now. If my banter is too much, tell me, Jamie, lay off the caffeine. You need to chill out just a little bit. I'm just wound up. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for dealing with my rambling. I'll talk to you later. Okay, I am back, and you can see I've got a little change up in my kit. FL600R flash with just this cheap flash diffuser. And I've got the EM5 Mark II with the 60mm macro. And I think that the cable, <laughs> I hate trying to remember all these numbers, FLCBM maybe? The, it's the Olympus flash cable. I could be doing this off camera, like wireless, you know, using the accessory flash on the EM5 and putting the uh, the flash into slave mode. But for some reason, I just felt like getting the cable out and doing it this way. Um, I thought about going and tracking down Monarch butterfly caterpillars, but I just don't have time to make it out right now. So I'm basically doing like this little backyard safari. Um, it's not hard to find insects, really. And actually, super cool. Check this guy out. Hopefully he shows up. Oh, he just ran away. It's like some sort of little assassin beetle. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to see if I can coax him back up to the top of the table. But there was also right in front of him this tiny little fly, which I hope lands again. I'm looking for him right now. If he does... He does this really cool thing with his wings where he folds them up above himself and then kind of wiggles them around like some sort of, I'm going to assume like a mating thing. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is turn this, the tracker off and just start shooting. And I'll just tell you right now before I start, uh, all these shots are probably going to be at like F10. Um, the ISO right now is at 200. We'll see how fast of a shutter speed I can get. I should be able to capture these critters because they're not moving. The ones I'm going to be shooting are not moving. They should be stationary. And illuminating with the flash. Uh, flash priority is what it's set to. So I'm going to let the camera meter appropriately. If I have to, then maybe I will switch things up a little bit and I will manually adjust the guide number on the flash to get proper exposure. But generally I do all right, you know, just letting the camera do the, the thinking for me. So... Let me turn it off. And this is just on a picnic table in my backyard, like this old picnic table that I've just got some wood sitting on right now. Um, yeah, let me turn this camera off and uh, see if I can find some bugs. Or maybe I'll just set it down and let it record me stalking the wild bugs on the table on my little backyard safari here. See you in a bit. All right, so <laughs> I'm lying in the yard. Probably look like a nut, but again, so the setup, EM5 Mark II, FL600R, FLCBM or something like that, flash cable. <sighs> Current settings on the camera, F8, negative 0.3 exposure value, ISO 200. It's a slow shutter speed, I know, but I'm thinking that the flash should freeze any minor movement that I'm getting. What I'm shooting is, and it's probably not going to show because it's such a wide field of view on this camera, but on that leaf on this hosta is a little itty bitty jumping spider. And he or she is really small, could probably fit on my pinky fingernail very easily. And that's my subject so far. I haven't found anything interesting yet. A lot of things that I've already shot before. Long-legged flies, bottle flies. Um, man, what else did I see? Oh, like an ugly cricket. That's really about it. Not a whole lot interesting. That little fly with the weird wings, he never came back. So, and I've shot jumping spiders before, but this jumping spider is different than anything I've shot before, so that's always exciting to come across something new. Um, and my technique for finding things new to shoot, or if, let me just change that. 
my technique for finding things to shoot when I'm shooting macro is to just find a surface and look for some sort of anomaly on the surface. In this case, it's a green leaf and I saw a dark spot on it. So as I got closer, I slowed down to investigate. And as I got closer, I realized, hey, it's a jumping spider. Uh, it's the same with, like, there's this old privacy fence that separates my property from the lot next to us. And what I'll do is I'll get right along, get my face right up against the fence and look right down the length of it and look for things that are bumping out from the fence. And oftentimes that's where I'll find flies and other types of, you know, insects sitting on the fence to shoot. And then just I approach slowly and set up and shoot. The way I was setting up the shot... I will set the camera down here, right here. Maybe you can see, hopefully. If not, this is just a waste of time. So, the spider is right here on this leaf. It's looking at me. So what I'm doing is holding the flash up above like this and coming straight down. I'm right at the end of the lens. Hopefully you're in my field of view here. I'm just setting up nice and slow. And shooting. Just like that. Just a typical exposure, nothing super fancy yet. I'll get in to Lightroom. This is pretty unflattering position I'm in here, I suppose. <laughs> so let me get up. So like I said, I'll probably go into Lightroom and I'll adjust the saturation and contrast just to give it some more vibrancy, some more color, make the green stand out, or make the green more rich, saturated, so the spider stands out against that background a little bit better. I'll shut the camera off and I'll do a little more exploring, see if I can't find another subject. I'm trying to find things that I haven't shot before. Um, like I said, green bottle flies, long-legged flies, a lot of these are things that I've shot before. I want to find different subjects. So I've got one down. Let's see if I can find another one. I'll be right back.